Hello Algebra 1 students. It's Wednesday, April 15th. I hope you're having a good day. It certainly is beautiful and sunny outside. I hope you get to enjoy that and I hope that you did well on your chapter 11 review. So uh, the test for chapter 11 will come next week but uh, we are going to go ahead and start um, <clears throat> I think actually, I'm sorry, I misspoke. <clears throat> the test will come this week, as long as we can have some opportunities for tutoring, because I know that it's a tough chapter. So there'll be more on that later. In the meantime, we're going to start Chapter 12 today and just do Lesson 12.1. So let's say a prayer and get started. Father in heaven, we just thank you for this beautiful day. I just pray for all of my students that they would be nice and safe, in your arms uh, with their health and all that concerns them. I pray that they would have great success on this lesson, that they would focus well and learn it all, and that you'd strengthen me and help me to be the very best teacher I can be, and help me to use words that really communicates it so they get it. And we just thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to sit down and we're going to get started. I hope you have some notes ready. Actually, I sent three um, papers, worksheets for you, so I hope you have those printed because I am going to work directly off of those. All right, so uh, let's sit down and get started. All right, this is lesson... 12.1, and it's about inverse variation. Okay, and what that is, you can see <clears throat> there's a blank that says inverse variation, and I want you to fill in the blank, and it, set, it is the x value is the reciprocal of the y value. All right. So here's some examples. Like uh, y equals 2 over x. You can write that in the blank near examples. Or y equals negative 10 over x. What it means is that as x increases, y decreases. All right? And the formula for that is y equals x over a. I'm sorry, a over x. Okay, so you can see that the x value is the reciprocal of the y value. So uh, they have this inverse relationship. Now you might be wondering, why am I learning this? Well, I looked it up because I thought, my goodness, we're going to do all this hard work about inverse variation. Is there any practical applications in the world? And there are. This is used in GPS. It's used in sundials. It is used to show the path of uh, or orbiting bodies. So meaning that if you want to know the path of a planet or a star or a comet, what its orbit is, um, you use the inverse function. It also has uh, uses in our economy, like as prices increase, uh, I'm sorry, decrease, demand will increase. So, uh, for example, if the price goes down a lot on an iPhone 10, then uh, more people are going to buy it because it's cheaper. In the same way, if prices go up for something, you tend to have less people buying that because it's more expensive. So it's an inverse relationship. Another example is our equation d equals rt. That is an inverse function. 
because um, if we got um, T alone, like this, and rewrote it like that, as speed increases, which is the rate, our time decreases. So you can, and that makes total sense. If you're going faster in your car, you get there quick, more quickly, right? If you are going slower, you have a slower speed, then it takes you longer to get there. So there's many things that have this inverse relationship. Okay, now, how does that relate to what we've already done, which is called a direct variation? Yeah, exactly, exactly. A direct variation is the x value directly changes the y value. Okay, so you fill that in the blank right there. And some examples of this, I'm going to erase this now. Would be y equals 3x, y equals negative 8x. Okay, those are some examples. And uh, the formula is y equals ax. So what that means is as x increases, y also increases. Or as x decreases, y also de decreases. So you see that's direct. Increase to increase. Decrease to decrease. That is a direct relationship. Whereas up here, it's indirect because um, when x increases, y decreases. So it changes it, but indirectly. Okay? All right, so let's do some examples. Number one, I'm not going to write it down, uh, the directions there. I'll just read it. Well, actually, I'll write it. Tell whether the equation represents direct variation. Oh, here it is, 1061. Inverse or neither. No, we'll have a thousand times. Okay. And let's look at the first one. Write this down. I'm going to change colors. Y, X, Y equals 4. Well, that doesn't fit either of our formulas. <clears throat> and in both of our formulas, if you look up here, you have Y equals something. Y is alone. Do you see that? Y is by itself. So, I want to get Y alone. And how would I do that? I divide by X. So then I end up with y equals 4 over x. And that is an inverse relationship. So that's what we would write underneath. It looks just like our formula. Okay, here's b. y over 2 equals x. Okay, so again, I don't have y alone. When I see y by itself, I can tell whether it is inverse or direct. So I'm going to multiply by 2 on both sides. Move this b over a little. These cancel. y equals 2x. Okay, now you can see that it's a direct variation. Just like y equals ax. Okay, let's do C. How about this one? Y equals 2X plus 3. Well, let's see. Here's our formula for direct variation. They don't look the same. 
I've got a plus 3. The other one is a over x. Well, obviously I've got 2x here, so that doesn't work. So the plus 3 shows me that it's neither. When you have the y-intercept showing, it's other than zero. If the y-intercept is not zero, then it's neither. If you look here, there's nothing written in this problem. So how I would write that with the y-intercept would be plus zero. My y-intercept would be zero. A direct variation has a y-intercept of zero. Okay? So, um... This is neither. Y intercept I, what did I send? Oh, that, that's, that's is thing. not oh, zero. I, I don't, you know what? I was just looking when I <coughs> Hey Chris. Hold on for a second. I can hear you. Alright, I can hear you too. I'll talk quieter. Thank you, I'm taping. Um, no, Sometimes we're still at home. Okay, yeah. let's go ahead and graph these and see what graphing a um a uh inverse function looks like. Okay, number two. No, I'm not worried about I'm not worried about those. I'm like, okay, I know that. Graph y equals 4 over x. Okay, so we have a table here, and you already have your values written there, so let's work it out. Okay, so let's see how this works. If I change colors, I'm going to use red again. All right, so if I put 4 in, that means uh, 4 over negative 4. I'm putting negative 4 in for x, I get negative 1. If I put negative 2 in for x, I get negative 2. Do you see how that works? I'm putting the x value into my equation. So if I put negative 1 in for x, I get negative 4. If I put 0 in, I have 4 over 0. I can never have uh, 0 in the denominator, so that becomes undefined with a u. All right, if I put 1 in, 4 over 1 is 4. I put 2 in, 4 over 2 is 2. And I put 4 in for x, and I get 4 over 4 is 1. Okay, now I'm going to erase these. And let's graph it. So I have negative 4 for x. Oh, I need to extend this a little bit. Okay. All right, so let's see. Negative 4, negative 1 is right here. Negative 2, negative 2 is here. Negative 1, negative 4 is down here. Sorry, I made my table too close to my graph. But I wanted to have enough room over on the other side. Okay, so then I have 1, 4, 2, 2, and 4, 1. Okay, and this comes down like this. So there's my graph. It's, and it's got two curves. Now, I want you to notice that <clears throat> each graph is getting, when I, from here, if I go down this way, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and it's approaching zero, but it never gets to zero because I cannot have a zero in the denominator, okay? So that means that this y-axis is a boundary. Okay? In the same way, this value here, as you're going, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller as we make 
uh, put larger and larger numbers in for x. If I have 4 over 10, 4 over 20, 4 over 30, 4 over 100, do you see how the y keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller? But I have 4. I have 4 in the, in the numerator, so it's always going to be something. It's never going to get down to 0. So the x-axis is also a boundary, and we'll talk more about that later. So my graph it gets closer and closer to zero for both x and y, but it doesn't actually hit there. All right, let's do number three. I'll give you a moment for that. Okay, sorry about that. Graph y equals negative 4 over x. You already have that. Okay, let's move this over a bit. negative 4, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 4. Okay, I'm going to change colors. I'm sure you've caught up by now if you're behind a little. Okay, so if I put negative 4 in for x, I get 1. If I put negative 4 or negative 2 in for x, I get positive 2. If I put negative 1 in for x, I get 4, and I can't have 0 in the denominator. Oh. If I put 1 in for x, I get 4. If I put 2 in for x, I get 2. If I put 4 in for x, oh, whoops, I'm sorry. This is going to be negative 1, and this is negative 2. And then if I have negative 4 in for x, I get negative 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph it. I have negative 4, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, right here. Negative 2, 2. Negative 1, 4. So my curve looks like this. And then, uh, oops, I didn't mean 0. I meant u. Sorry about that. We had a little problem, but now it's solved. Okay, so I got distracted. 1, negative 4. 1, negative 4. 2, negative 2, and 4, negative 1. Okay, so my graph looks like that. And again, both curves approach 0 for x and 0 for y, but they don't actually hit it. They never get there. They get smaller and smaller and smaller, but it doesn't go there. All right. So now let's look down at the bottom where it says compare number two and number three. On the blank, I want you to write this. You have the same graphs, and, but opposite coordinates, quadrants, okay? And the negative sign changes the quadrants. Okay, so if we compare these two, I'm going to look, make this a little smaller, you can see that I've got my curves here and here in the first and third quadrant, and on the negative uh, <clears throat> A, I have the other two the second and the fourth quadrant. So the graphs are the same, the numbers are the same, but how they change when we change the sign is they're in opposite coordinate, uh, quadrants. Okay? And that's what the negative sign does to the graph. Okay, let's go on to the next page. 
where it says, let's change colors, how about purple this time, where it says inverse function, I want you to write down that it is called a hyperbola. Okay, you will need to know that word, especially in Algebra 2. And the next word is asymptotes. And that is our fancy word for the boundaries that the equation cannot cross. So we already talked about that. Um, up here in our graphs, x cannot be 0, y cannot be 0. These are my asymptotes. Those boundaries are called asymptotes. Now I'm telling you that it can't be zero because we're going to do other equations later on and you will see that the boundaries can move. Our graphs are going to move. They're not going to stay right in the middle. So for now, you know what the asymptotes are. Those are the boundaries that the graph doesn't cross. And uh, for now, they're 0, 0, but they're going to change. Okay? So I want you to go ahead and do some OIOs and pause uh, the <clears throat> video. I want you to do number 1, number 2, and number 3, and we'll come back and talk about all those. So go ahead and pause the video, and I am just going to keep going in just a moment. Okay. All right, I'm going to keep going. So here's A, 4y equals 3x. I hope that you're checking your work now. I have to get y alone, so I'm going to divide by 4, and I get y equals 3x over 4. Okay, well, what is that? I wanted you to think about that. I didn't want to tell you with a fraction what the answer was. I wanted you to try to figure it out. But I can tell you this, that it's direct. And the reason is the x is still in the numerator. Okay? So because of that, even though I have a fraction, the x is on top. So it's a direct variation. That would be very different than this, right? Where I had the x in the denominator. That is not what this says. X is in the numerator, so it's direct. All right, B, Y equals 2 over X. That's inverse. The 2 is in the position of A, and you can see clearly that that's inverse function. Probably C is neither, but we can't tell yet until we get X by itself. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 5x, and I get negative y equals negative 5x plus 3. My, I need to change the sign. I'm not finished. y is not alone. It still has a negative. So I'm going to multiply through by negative 1, which means I change all the signs. And I can see this is neither because the y-intercept is negative 3, not 0. Okay? All right, let's go on and graph.
y equals 3 over x. Okay, now what numbers are you going to put in? I usually try to pick numbers that are close to the y and x axis, the origin, and I also like to pick numbers that are easy to work with. So I'm looking at the 3 in the numerator and I'm thinking, well, if I had a negative 3, that's going to work out to an easy fraction, isn't it? So you can pick whatever numbers you want. You'll get a very, the same graph, but let's pick things that are easy. So this would become negative 1. If I picked negative 2, I would get negative 1.5. That's easy. If I picked negative 1, that would be negative 3. 0 is undefined. 1 would be 3. 2 would be 1.5. And 3 would be 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph these. Negative 3, 1. Negative 2, 1.5. And negative 1, 3 just like that. Okay, now I have 1, 3. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. I went up instead of down. I am so sorry. It's down here. Glad I caught myself. I'm going too fast. See, that's a lesson to you. Your teacher is going too fast. She makes a mistake. So you have to go slow with this. All right. 1, 3. 2, negative 1, 3, 1, and there's my graph. Okay, and my asymptotes are y equals 0 and x equals 0. I didn't ask you for that, I'm just throwing that in. Okay, number 3. And I'm going to choose the same ones. You can pick what you like. And here I get 1, 1 1.5, because I have, I'm graphing y equals negative 3 over x. And I get 3, undefined, negative 3, negative 1 1.5, and negative 1. So I've got negative 3, 1, that's here, negative 2, 1 1.5, negative 1, 3, so this is the opposite, and 1, negative 3, 2, negative 1 1.5, and 3, negative 1, so it goes like this. Okay, there's my graph, and my, I didn't ask you for this, but my asymptotes are the x and y axis. Okay, let's go down below and look at the summary of the type of graphs we have. This is a direct variation and that line looks like something like this. Okay, you're gonna, it's going to be direct and it's positive. Positive slope. It goes from the bottom of the left side to the top of the right side. Okay, and how that's different than negative A. Oh, I'm sorry, this has to go right through the middle. So I'm going to put this right through here. Negative A to the X goes this way. Okay, so this is direct but it's negative, negative slope, okay? Now, y equals a to the x, that's our direct variation, and that's going to look like this when a is positive, generally like that. So this is inverse, and it's positive. And then on your sheet, the, the other last one is this, which it generally looks like this. So draw these in there. And this is inverse 
and a negative A. Okay, we can put A here. Yeah. Well, I don't, really, I don't really care how it's done. Okay. All right, so we do that just to kind of have a summary and an overview and to compare. A direct variation is a line and it goes through the origin. An indirect is, has the boundary of the origins, but it doesn't actually touch the origin, and it's the curves around it. All right, let's go on to number four. I will write that down. The variables. X and Y vary inversely, so I know I'm going to use that formula and y equals 6 when x is negative 3. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is write our inverse equation. So I need to write down my formula. Okay, so I have that. I have x and I have y. What I don't have is a. A is what I'm missing. But I can substitute my point, negative 3, 6, into the equation for x and y, and that will allow me to solve for a. And once I solve for a, then I can write my equation. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to solve for a by substituting x and y into the formula. Okay? So I'm going to have 6 here equals a over negative 3. And now I want to get a by itself. So I'm going to multiply by negative 3 on both sides. These cancel and a is negative 18. So I found that, so in, for this equation and this problem, my answer is I put negative 18 into the equation. So the first answer is what I circled, the inverse variation equation. Okay, the second part is find y when x is 4. Okay, so now I want to solve for y and substitute x into the equation. So I'm going to put y equals negative 18 over x and I'm going to put negative 4 in. There we go. And I'll reduce it if I can. So I get negative 9 over 2. So when x is 4, y is negative 9 over 2. So this point would be on my graph. It would be on my curve. All right, we're in the home stretch. Just two more and then some OIOs. So here's number five. Tell whether the table represents